Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for joining me for another Sunday Afternoons with Reverend Lucretia. I'm so glad you're here. And so the name of today's talk is, Do You Operate from a Place of Love or Fear? And the song is Brave by Sarah Barry Ellis. If you'd like to listen to the song before you hear the talk, just go ahead and click on the link. It will be down below in the description. So we're going to be talking a lot about the work of Gary Zukov. So primarily from his book, The Seed of the Soul, but from others of his teaching as well, we're going to be talking about the fact that every single thought or action, every single time that we make any intention to do anything, every single time that we make up our mind, it is always based on fear or love. So we're going to learn how to turn into our body and figure out when we're in a place of fear so that we can consciously move from that place to a place of love. We're going to be talking about that a whole lot. We're going to be talking about the fact that authentic power is love and the only way to change the world is by changing ourselves. We're going to be talking about scriptural references to fear not. We'll be talking about the metaphysical truth that fear is not real. We're going to be talking about Jim Carrey uh, who has such an incredible lifetime filled with both joy and laughter. He's a comedian but also great depression and he did a speech at a commencement that has so much to teach us about fear and love. So we'll be talking about that a little bit. And so I wanted to pick this song. The song was so special because it talks about speaking your truth, about being brave, about not keeping it inside, about being your authentic self, something we're going to be talking about quite a bit, and that it always comes from a place of love. Your words and your actions can hurt or heal. You can transform with love or you can destroy with a lack of love always choose love. So what we're going to be talking about over and over again is that there is always a choice involved. So Gary Sukoff, so The Seed of the Soul was written all the way back in 1989. He is one of Oprah Winfrey's favorite people. I think he's been on her show like 35 times. He had the 30th anniversary show a couple of years ago. And so she has held on to some of his beliefs and talked about his intentions, the his teachings on intention and how every single thing that we do needs to be started by setting an intention for it. So he talks about the fact that humanity has crossed over a threshold and that we are no longer a five sensory world, we are now a multi-sensory world. The five senses are all concerned with physical reality. The multi-sensory world is all concerned with spirituality and goes way beyond the limitations of the physical world. We are now evolving through a responsible choice using the guidance that is provided by non-physical teachers. And he says it's the most significant evolutionary transition that mankind has ever been through. So we're going to be talking about the fact that now that we are multisensory and we can tune into other parts of ourselves than just the physical, we're able to learn lessons that we need to learn so that we can be the people that we're supposed to be and evolve and grow. So the participation in the non-physical reality has created this spiritual evolution. So just to start off by saying a little bit about what the soul is, the soul is that part of us that is immortal. The personality is born and matures in time. It decays and it passes away. The soul has been here before and after the personality. So I want to start off with 10 lessons from the Seed of the Soul book. Uh, again, he talks about these in others of his books as well and certainly in many of his talks, but I'm just going to boil it down to these 10 and then several of them we will be focusing on the most. So the 10 lessons. The first is that every single one of us are both individually and collectively constantly evolving, that this is a journey that we are on, that we are growing every single moment that we are alive. Number two is that everything should be treated with reverence and respect for they deserve it. So everything, everybody, every living organism needs to be treated with reverence and respect. And he does talk quite a bit about the earth and our need to take better care of it. Number three, when we cultivate the seed of love in our hearts, it extends to others. Number four, there's an intuitive sense of knowledge, a source within us that gives us guidance and direction. And so what this spiritual evolution is about is about tapping into all of that. Number five, our intention determines the result that we get. We're going to be talking quite a bit about intention. Number six, we need to create spiritual partnerships. So spiritual partnerships are where we are 100% authentically ourselves, where we are 
are genuinely connecting with others so that we can live more fulfilling lives. Number seven is when you tap into your inner self, you change from trying to oppress others to a desire to help others. So he talks about the fact that up until now, power has always been about control and about uh, manipulating people to get what you want. And as we go through this evolutionary transition, it is not about that anymore. It's going to be more about helping people. Number eight is that there is a need to develop a profound sense of trust and faith in the divine power that is within you. We'll talk about that a lot. Number nine is the energy of love is the most powerful force in the universe. If you had to sum up everything that I've talked about for all of the time that I've been on this station, it always is that everything always comes back to love. And that's the most important force that we could ever pay attention to. Number 10, we must connect with love and manifest it to live lives that are filled with joy, happiness, and abundance. This is not a material world. It is a spiritual world. So now as newly evolved people, we long for harmony, cooperation, sharing, and reverence for life. We use the higher orders than justice and logic, those orders that come from the heart. So the seed of the soul, the book provides a vocabulary so that we can talk about what this is. And he talks a lot about authentic power, which is the alignment of the personality with the soul. So all of the fear is going to be broken down into words that we understand. He gives us the vocabulary in the book so that we understand that we're, we're in a state of fear. And then he talks about all of the words that are associated with love because we are always coming from either one place or the other. As we evolve, we become more aware of the potential we have that we never had before as we're able to tap into those spiritual resources that are always giving us guidance. So every form of love feels good. Every form of fear is painful. We need to develop a habit of noticing the love and the fear in your body. And he talks quite a bit about the fact that we need to be able to study our bodies and understand that when there is fear going on, when we're having pain, it is become because we are coming from a place of fear. And so we need to be able to locate the places in our bodies where we feel the fear and so that we can become more aware. And when we are more aware, when we get to know our bodies, more and we understand that where there is pain, there is fear, then we can start to make conscious choices to move away from that fear. So the experience of fear includes, so remember I said we have a vocabulary. So I'm going to give you all of the words that are associated with fear. You will recognize mo most of them. Anger, jealousy, loneliness, confusion, superiority, inferiority, obsession with money or fame or externals, addictions to food, sex, shopping, alcohol, drugs, blaming, criticism, resentment, competitiveness, depression, righteousness, all of those words are based in fear. Recognize and move beyond the control of fear. The experience of love includes, so here's the vocabulary words that go with love, gratitude, caring, reverence, trust, appreciation, patience, contentment, awe of the universe, generosity, integrity, vulnerability, courage, openness, and kindness. Recognize and cultivate love. So again, we're talking about the fact that we set an intention to either be in either parts of our personality, the part of our personality that is filled with fear, or the part of our personality that is filled with love. If you are not spiritually grounded and you know that you are challenged and know that when you are challenged about growth, when bad things happen, you will automatically go to a place of fear. You forget what he calls the unchangeable ground of your being, the part of your being that is solid and connected to all beings and all things. When you are in anger, jealousy, or resentment, and you don't know that this is a part of your personality that is something that you can shift, you get stuck. But when you recognize that when you're having those feelings and you can address them and understand that they're coming from a place of fear, you can automatically shift your attention to a part that is grateful, appreciative, and in awe. He talks about nature all the time. I always end up going back to nature because all of the teachers talk about nature as a way to get yourself grounded and get yourself back in tune with your spirituality. Experiences are presented to you in what he calls the earth school for a reason. You need to experience them fully, not to deny them or resist them. While feeling it, you choose the healthiest part of your personality you can respond with. And he says, always choose love. 
So he was a sex addict. It is hard to understand that now. If you look at him, he seems like such a mellow, wise, calm guy, but he was a sex addict. He rode motorcycles, not only just rode them, but in very dangerous ways. Um, he, he says he did all of this to avoid pain. He was in Vietnam. He was a Green Beret officer. Um, he said he had a very destructive path that he was on. He was always putting himself in the line of danger. And these were unconscious ways of avoiding the pain. And he said he was running away. There was a frightened part of his personality he had shame. He said, when you're in a relationship and you have that frightened part of your personality come up and someone is able to recognize it and call you on it, you instantly push them away. He said, a lot of the relationship problems happen because that fear place comes up and that shame place comes up and you push people away who talk to you about it. It hits a nerve of fear. You need to develop emotional awareness through the physical sensations in your body. If you don't, you're on automatic. So again, he teaches you to pay really good attention to your body and notice that when you're in pain, it's actually because you're in fear somewhere. He uh, equates it to the Buddha. The Buddha talks all about the wheel of samsara, which is suffering. And he says, if you're not aware of what's going on, you're just going to repeat the same actions over and over and over, the same behaviors, the same relationships. You're never going to change. It's just this endless wheel of going around and around and around. What goes out is always coming back. You need to set an intention. Again, every single action, thought, and feeling is motivated by an intention. And that intention is a cause that exists as one with an effect. So what he's saying is that every single time you set an intention to do something, there's going to be an effect that comes along with the behavior that you do. Intention is the energy that infuses the deed or the word the reason you are doing it. He says, if you dig all the way to the bedrock of your intention, you will get to a place where there are always only two intentions. One of them is love and the other of them is fear. Choose to come from a place of giving the gifts that you were born to give. When the personality comes to serve fully the energy of its soul, that is authentic power. External power, how we have been living, is always about manipulating and control, and that comes from a fear place. You're trying to cover a very deep pain. He says the very deep pain that you're trying to cover is your sense of powerlessness. In a frightened part of your personality, you're trying to fill a vacuum and there's no end to it. You are controlled by the frightened parts of your personality. The authentic power recognizes that you are aligned with exactly the flow of life and you are serving the energy of the soul. The intention that really produces results is the intention of love, using your personality to serve the greater calling that your soul came here for. Nobody can touch you when you are able to be in that space. That's why you were born. Authentic power is the ability to distinguish within yourself the difference between love and fear and choose love no matter what is happening on the inside of you or what is happening on the outside of you. When you consciously choose love while you're feeling fear, that is how you create authentic power. So let's just look at scripture. You know, there's a geeky part of me. So the geeky part says the do not fear is listed in the New International Version 45 times. Do not be afraid or be not afraid is listed 97 times. So you understand that they talk about not being afraid an awful, awful lot. I pulled out a couple and then we're going to talk a little bit about one of them in particular at the end. Second Timothy 1 7. God gave us the spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Isaiah 41 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed made for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah 35 4 say to those with fearful hearts be strong do not fear your God will come. He will come with vengeance with divine retribution. He will come to serve you. When you have fear in your heart you are aligning yourself with source and energy and that's the way to change it. Remember that God is with you always and will give you strength when you need it the most. So when you feel that fear in your heart is the time when you have to align yourself with source. Most of the time that we're in fear, it's because we're feeling separate from source. We're feeling that for some reason or other, God is not with us. And whenever we get into that place of feeling that God is not with us is when we are overwhelmed with fear. Deuteronomy 31, 6, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Joshua 1 9, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And I'm going to close with John, 1 John 4 18, which we'll be talking about this a little bit later. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. 
for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. So you need to remember always, the Apostle John represents the spiritual faculty of love. He is known as the disciple whom Jesus loved. So all of his writings and all of his teachings, the major dominant theme was always love. God is love. His love is perfect. And all of the love that we express in a universal and spiritual and unselfish way is perfect love. When we express the fullness of love as did Jesus, his love is perfected in us. That's what they're talking about. Fear comes from a feeling of being disconnected from God. It comes when we forget that there is someone else who is in charge of the universe, that there is a supreme being, and we are not it. All of the thoughts we think and the actions we take come from either fear or love. So we need to really be paying attention. So let's just jump into the metaphysical part of this. Fillmore says that fear is a painful emotion marked by alarm, dread, or disquiet. That's the Webster definition. But he says fear is one of the most subtle and destructive errors that the carnal mind in man experiences. Fear is a paralyzer of mental actions. It weakens both the mind and the body. Fear throws dust in our eyes and hides the mighty spiritual forces that are always with us. Blessed are those who deny ignorance and fear and affirm the presence and power of faith. Fear is cast out by perfect love. To know divine love is to be selfless, and to be selfless is to be without fear. The God-conscious person is filled with quietness and confidence. So, you know, Emily Cady, she wrote what's basically the textbook for unity. Um, and it, she wrote in here, only what God created can have any reality. There is no reality in fear, jealousy, because God did not create them. They are changing, unpleasant, negative, detrimental feelings that are not of the nature of God, the good, and so are not real. Fear is the name we give to that painful emotion caused by a belief in evil and the expectation that it will harm us or someone we love. We do not fear anything that we understand. When we cooperate with the law that it governs, then we understand that fear cannot take us over. When we come to the understanding that there is no reality in fear, because only what God created can have reality, we overcome the belief in fear. This overcoming often takes much denial and prayer, she says. Come back to the belief that God is in everything and that God is love. Therefore, overcoming fear is found in aligning yourself with perfect love. So Eric Butterworth in 1975 had a series of talks and he says that worry, he talked about worry and how much we concentrate on it, is the concentration of the mind on experiences and relationships from the most pessimistic point of view. If a person would meditate on the omnipresence of God, the good, with the same single-mindedness, he says, that he does on the possibilities of failure, loss, or sickness, life for him would be a veritable heaven. Habit we have acquired. He talks a lot about the fact that we allow ourselves to have this feeling because when it comes, we just encourage it and we do it over and over and over again and we sort of get on this wheel that we don't get off of. But he says we do always have choice and that's what makes us have the divine power inside us gives us the ability to make choices. If it's a habit that we acquired, we have a choice. If it sometimes becomes such a strong habit, it becomes that it's like autopilot. But worry and fear and tension are absolutely Acts of volition, he says. If you, it saps your strength, it poisons your system, it disturbs and confuses your mind, it makes you indecisive and ineffective, it prevents you from doing your best. The first step, he says, always to get out of this is to get in tune with the infinite. The unfailing antidote to fear and worry is prayer. In nothing be anxious, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. So, Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey, I've listened to a lot of his talks. He actually ha is a very, very spiritual person, and he has a lot of motivational talks. So he's uh, this dichotomy between someone who was a comedian, incredibly funny, probably not surpassed by many people in his ability to make people laugh. Um, but he also suffers from depression quite a bit. Um, and he's kind of gone into hiding in the last couple of years. But he has some remarkable thoughts about love and fear. He did a commencement address seven years ago, and he talked quite a bit about love and fear. And he says, the purpose of my life had always been to free people from concern, to make them laugh, to not feel worry. What is your purpose? How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? 
The effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. Everything you gain in life will rot and fall apart, and the only thing that will be left of you is what is in your heart. Fear is going to be a player in your life, but you get to decide how much. You can spend your whole life imagining ghosts, worrying about the pathway to the future, but all there will ever be is what's happening here. And the decisions we make in this moment, which are based on either love or fear. You know who you are. That peace lies somewhere beyond personality, beyond perception of others, beyond invention and disguise, even beyond effort itself. To find the real peace, you have to let the armor go. You need, your need for acceptance can make you invisible in the world. My soul is not contained within the limits of my body. My body is contained within the limitlessness of my soul. As far as I can tell, it's just about letting the universe know what you want, while working toward it, while letting go of how it comes to pass. Brilliant words. Why not take a chance on faith as well? I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. You are ready and able to do beautiful things today in this world and you will only ever have two choices, love or fear. Choose love and don't ever let fear turn you against your playful heart. I just love that. I just thought those words were absolutely magnificent and they help so much to describe what it is that we're talking about today. So here's what I know. When you are more concerned with the impression you make, what people will think about you, when you wear a mask and hide the real you, that is always about fear. It's sad that mostly people don't come to truth until they lived a while. But after all these years, I am so clear about this joy, real joy, only comes from aligning yourself with the truth of who you really are, the real you, who is the part of the whole enormous continuum of spirit where we are all connected to each other and the individual, unique, only one on the earth, you. Being brave means letting go of fear and knowing that who you are is unique and special and different. And every time you squash that little voice who wants to do something but is afraid, you are not expressing the real you. Again, it all comes back to fear versus love. When you really love yourself and understand the power that lives within you, the God force that made you, you, you are here to align yourself with that force. When you love yourself that much, you can only operate from a place of love and not fear. Understand that the soul of you is perfect, whole, and complete, and divine, and it expresses itself through your special, unique personality. Gary Zukov talks a lot about you with a little Y, the personality, and you with a big Y, the soul. And the connecting force that holds it all together is love. Love yourself, be you. Love each other always. Operate from love and not fear. As the song says, I want to see you be brave. And so it is. Remember at all times the power is in you. It always has been and it always will be. I'd love to hear your comments. If you are able to distinguish when you are in fear and when you are in love, how has that been helpful for you? And when you are in fear, how are you able to move yourself over to a place of love? I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much for watching. I send you on your way with many blessings.